Lead is one of those toxic metals that most people think only exists in old paint or water pipes. But the truth is, it's still all around us. It's in some unported products, certain cosmetics, older buildings, and even soil near highways or industrial areas. And unfortunately, once lead gets inside your body, it likes to stick around, especially in your bones and brain. Now, a healthy body can handle tiny amounts of it, but if your detox systems are sluggish, and they are for many people, then lead starts to accumulate. It hides in your tissues and can cause slow long-term damage. That's why I wanted to make this entire video to show you how to help your body get rid of lead naturally in a way that's gentle and actually supports your health instead of shocking your system. To begin, you have to understand that lead causes all these health problems, not just because it causes oxidative stress, but also because it mimics other minerals in your body that it actually needs. So it can replace calcium in your bones, disrupt enzymes that rely on zinc, and interfere with iron metabolism. That means lead doesn't just cause damage by itself, it also gets in the way of nutrients that your body needs to heal and run properly. Some of the most common symptoms of lead overload include brain fog or memory problems, mood issues like irritability, depression and even aggression, fatigue that doesn't go away, achy joints and hurting bones, high blood pressure and digestive issues. And just like with other toxic metals, it's not always a huge single exposure that's the problem. It's usually small steady amounts over years and decades. Maybe you grew up in an older house with lead pipes or chip paint, or you lived near heavy traffic or an industrial area. Or maybe your mother had lead exposure and passed it down to you through pregnancy. Lead is notorious for getting stored in bones for a very long time and then being released back into the bloodstream during times of stress, illness, or just when you're aging. Now obviously, if you've been exposed to a very high amount of lead all at once, then you want to see a doctor. That's an acute lead poisoning and it's a medical emergency. But this video is about how to help your body get rid of low-level, long-term lead buildup that most people aren't even aware of. Let's start with what I generally don't recommend, which is jumping straight into chelation therapy. Chelation therapy is where you use a substance that binds to metals and then pulls them out. This might be things like EDTA or DMSA. These can be life-saving in cases of acute poisoning, but they're not something I would recommend for long-term low-level lead issues. That's because chelators also pull out essential minerals like magnesium and zinc, which most people are already low in. This can leave you feeling worse than before. Plus, when you suddenly yank metals like lead out of your tissues, your liver and kidneys have to scramble to eliminate them. If your detox organs aren't ready, that lead can just get redistributed to other places, sometimes more sensitive ones like your brain. So instead, you need to support your body's natural elimination systems first. That way, your body can start gently pushing lead out on its own at a pace that it can handle. The first step towards doing this is always to get your liver, kidneys, and gut working properly. These are your main exit routes. If they're sluggish, then metals like lead can't get out efficiently and will keep circulating. What you want to do is support your liver and increase bile flow, and this is explained in more detail in other videos that I will link in the description. It's very important for toxin elimination of all kinds, not just lead. Also stay hydrated to support kidney filtration, and make sure you're having regular bowel movements. All of this is non-negotiable. Again, sluggish liver, sluggish kidneys, or constipation all mean that your toxins will be sitting around longer and can get reabsorbed. These things alone can already start lowering your lead burden without any drastic protocols. The next step then is to replace lead with its nutrient counterpart. This is often overlooked by many beginners, but it's crucial as well you want to replace the minerals that lead crowds out. Remember, it can mimic calcium, zinc, magnesium, and iron. So if you're deficient in these, your body will hold on to more lead as a substitute. By restoring these minerals, you can send a signal to your body that it's safe to let the lead go. This concept is called ionic mimicry. Calcium is the biggest one here, so make sure you're getting enough through your diet, and if you want to supplement, definitely go with a lab-tested supplement because many calcium supplements have been shown to actually contain lead, which obviously defeats the purpose. Dosage will be around 400 to 800 milligrams and never take it without magnesium or K2. Iron is another one. Low iron increases lead absorption in the gut, so if you're low in it, your body will literally soak up more lead. 
Unfortunately, iron is a difficult subject, especially for men, and I talk about why in a different video. So check that one out before supplementing it, because too much will be harmful. Zinc is crucial because lead displaces it in enzyme binding sites, like I said before, and here a typical dosage will be between 15 to 30 milligrams, sometimes more. And lastly, magnesium will help keep lead from depositing in tissues. About 200 to 400 milligrams of magnesium is a good start here. So by topping up these minerals, your body is less likely to hold on to lead and will be better able to replace it. The third step then will be to boost your antioxidants and protect your tissue. When lead starts coming out of storage, it can create a lot of oxidative stress, which is why antioxidants are so important. They help neutralize these free radicals so your cells stay protected during the detox. The big ones here are obviously vitamin C, which also helps mobilize lead, so you need to be careful with dosage. A normal range would be around 200 to 1000 milligrams per day, but you probably want to start on the lower end. Then vitamin E. Here, normal dosages are between 100 and 400 IU per day, and it can help protect fats in your brain and nerves from the oxidative stress. And then glutathione, which is the master antioxidant that's made in your liver. You can support it with precursors like N-acetylcysteine in a dose from around 600 to 1200 milligrams per day, or simply by eating sulfur-rich foods like garlic, onions, eggs, and cruciferous vegetables. Also, don't forget selenium. Even though it doesn't directly swap with lead, it helps your overall antioxidative system run better. Around 100 to 200 micrograms per day from selenium yeast or even just Brazil nuts is a good place to start. Step four then is to support metallothionine and natural chelation. Your body actually makes certain proteins called metallothionines that bind to heavy metals and help escort them out safely. To make these, you need enough zinc and cysteine. We already covered zinc, and for cysteine, you can again use N-acetylcysteine or eat things like dairy, eggs, and meats. This gives your body the raw materials it needs to bind lead naturally, so it can be safely moved out through your bile and urine. This is very different from the synthetic chelation often used in IV form and that can cause a lot of side effects. Great, steps five and six are optional. First, you can think about gentle binders. So once you start freeing up lead from tissues, you want something in your gut to catch it and carry it out safely. That's where binders come into play. They stay in your intestines and latch onto metals so they don't get reabsorbed. Some options would be things like zeolite, modified citrus pectin or chlorella, or just a lot of fiber from all the vegetables that you should be eating anyway. Basically what a binder does is just mop up what your liver dumps into your bile to prevent reabsorption. And then lastly, and this is also optional, after you've done all these steps and your body is clearly handling detox well, then you can think about introducing some natural chelators. This would be things like low-dose alpha-lipoic acid. Again, this is very different from aggressive IV chelation, and alpha-lipoic acid will directly pull metals out of your cells. You still have to be careful because a lot of people still get side effects from it, and there are different ways of using it. I also talk about this in a different video, but it can be a good option as a last step. For most people, just fixing their mineral status, their elimination organs, so liver function, and using gentle binders is usually enough. That's already a very solid long-term plan that will detox lead. It will take a while, but it's not even close as aggressive as other protocols, so you also don't run into many side effects. On top of that, let me give you some lifestyle tips to decrease your lead exposure from the environment. Obviously, you want to use a good water filter, especially if you live in an old house with lead pipes. You want to be very cautious with renovations in old homes because sanding old paint can release lead dust. If you have kids and they play around a lot of industrial sites, make sure they wash their hands before eating. And you want to choose safer cookware and avoid cheap ceramics that may have lead glazes. To wrap up this video, let me say that lead is a very sneaky toxin. It builds up over years and can cause all kinds of vague but frustrating systems that most people never trace back to lead. By correctly supporting your natural detox pathways and giving your body the minerals that it's missing, you can help it slowly let go of the lead in a way that's safe and actually leaves you feeling better because that's the end goal here. Also, if you're getting into all of this because you're dealing with low energy, brain fog, or just think that toxins are wearing you down, 
make sure to check out the link in the description. I've put together a step-by-step -step detox masterclass that walks you through exactly how to do everything that we talked about in this video in much more detail. It's the same protocol that I used to rebuild my health after years of struggling, and it's been life-changing. Just click the link under my programs to learn more.